All right, so if you're in marketing and sales, our next talk is definitely for you as Max Cooper and Zach Duff tell us their captivating story of resilience, innovation, and the immense potential of embracing AR that has revolutionized their sales cycles during COVID and beyond. So just to introduce the speakers, um, Max Cooper is a senior application engineer at Automata, a robotics company that helps the life sciences industry to automate their workflows. Based in London, Maxim leads a team of pre-sales engineers designing solutions for lab managers and scientists. Zach Duff is CEO and co-founder of Jigspace, the world's highest rated AR app with more than 5 million downloads. With a passion for providing utility and delight through tech, Zach creates tools that help humanity communicate in the best possible way. And without further ado, I will pass it on to our speakers. Thanks. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for coming along. And I think we were set up very nicely by the last talk, if you saw it, uh, talking about like how to actually get going, what that looks like in an organization, and we're gonna dig into that a fair bit. Robots, augmented reality, you might be wondering how those things go together. We're gonna to share a story of how a robotics company revolutionized how they sell using augmented reality, and it completely changed the commercial landscape. You'll come away with practical insights for how you can apply this today in your businesses, and, and we'll go on this, we'll take you through some of the impact that it's actually had for them. I'm Zach, CEO, co-founder of Jigspace, 3D presentation platform that makes it easy for people to communicate their ideas. I'm Max, um, an automa a senior automation engineer at Automata, uh, a lab company, an automation company enabling labs um, to, to automate their workflows. So this story we're going to share, uh, we're going to give you, we're going to take you through a bit of a, a journey here. You'll hear from Max and how they've, the journey they've gone on uh, at Automata, and I'll share some of the cognitive science behind why this actually matters and why it is effective. We'll take you through what it looks like in practice with a demo, and we're going to wrap it up with discrete, actionable steps that you can take to start implementing this right now in your own organization. So take it away, Max. Thank you. So I'd like to cast your mind back to 2019, back when uh, life was a little simpler, at least it was at Automata. Back then, Automata had uh, this uh, robot called Eva, a six-axis robot that was designed to work in a variety of different applications. Um, but mainly to, to help automate lightweight applications in the manufacturing and packaging world. We're helping companies like Boeing work in high voltage situations, Fiat attaching little clips on car doors, uh, and Hugo Boss doing some packaging on their products. Um, to do things that we usually refer to as the three Ds, the dumb, the dirty, and the dangerous. Things for robots to be doing. But then everything started to change in 2020. The, call, the phone calls we were getting were no longer just factories, but they were labs desperate to automate. Back then, the UK was in a real crisis, uh, struggling to get tests to enough people quickly enough. Uh, school children couldn't go back to schools, and nurses and doctors could not go back to work uh, at the most important time. One facility came to us and asked us to help them scale to 100,000 COVID tests per year, or per day. Uh, and we brought over our manufacturing know-how, and this is what we came up with. Individual cells in which robots um, are automating the COVID testing. And these cells are equipped with doors, pistons, actuators, conveyor belts, things that are familiar to us in, in the manufacturing world. But as we, get it, as we started to get dig into the next project, we started to realize that um, the world of labs has not progressed in the last 100 years. Um, robotics in the life sciences is still pretty basic when it is implemented. Um, and the technology that has come into the labs, we still do benefit of it every day. Um, it allows us to have a wider range of tests at a higher accuracy. Um, but the work is still largely done by humans sitting behind a bench, manually uncapping tubes, cleaning spills of nasty chemicals, and handling live viruses. Essentially, we have PhDs and very smart people doing the 3Ds. 
So we started tying all these things together and iterated on the solution and came up with this. We call it the link bench. Think of it of a kitchen counter sized device on which you have a robot in front and it can move samples from one scientific appliance to another, linking all these appliances together. Um, truly a platform designed for the lab. And this was a major shift for us at Automata and we had to rethink everything we did. Uh, and three key challenges came up with this pivot away from manufacturing towards life sciences. Um, the buyer of this product is not familiar with automation. Uh, we used to sell to technically minded people who took robots for granted in factories to scientifically minded people who had never seen a robot in their lives. The machines we worked with now were incredibly heavy and expensive. A full link bench solution started around half a million pounds and can weigh way over four metric tons. The days of us being able to pack a small robot in the back of a car and take it to a site and demo it to our customers were long gone. We were no longer selling an end to a product, we were selling an end to end solution. Finally, these solutions are highly configurable. Uh, every customer scientific process and every lab layout is different. Our sales material must reflect those differences to be impactful and relevant to customers. It is time consuming and expensive to generate unique 3D assets for every, and sales collateral for every customer project. Our ability to scale and to was limited by the generation of these unique assets. Fortunately, a company down under in Australia was working on a new tool that was going to be a game changer on how we sell our products. There you go. So that company was us. Uh, so Jigspace's mission is to empower people to easily communicate products or ideas that are fundamentally spatial. We have three core tenets. Everything we do has to be simple, it has to be useful, and it has to be delightful. And this means that our users can take a CAD file for their products, they can turn it into a useful 3D presentation in minutes. We started commercialising our platform in 2020, and the companies that got value from it were selling large, complex, technical, expensive products, and it mattered to them that they could effectively communicate the value of their product to their customers. And they needed to be able to share it quickly with zero friction. And it's really working for them. So today, Jig is used by companies like Thermo Fisher Scientific, Medtronic, Alfa Romeo F1 team, and of course our good friends at Automata. These companies are selling sophisticated, complex products. They have long sales cycles involving multiple teams, and they're using augmented reality and jig space to sell their products faster, engage their audiences in their marketing, and solve real customer problems. And all of this, they're doing at high speed. But why augmented reality? Why is it better than the way they were doing things previously? So let's dig into that a bit. I have a two-year-old daughter. Now, I can describe a toy car to her. I can show her a picture about it. I can, we can read a book about it. I can make all the sounds. But the only way for her to truly understand what it's like, what a toy car is like, is for her to actually play with it. And there's something fundamental here about how we understand the world around us. In cognitive science, it's called embodied cognition. When we experience things like seeing, hearing, touching something, our bodies are involved in that experience. That physical senses being involved, not just our mind, is critical to understanding the world. And you can probably start to see how this applies to augmented reality. Firstly, cognition is influenced by our sensory input and our perception. So we can use AR to overlay digital visualizations and objects onto the real world. We create a rich sensory experience. Secondly, physical experiences and our movements shape the way that we think, remember, and solve problems. 
So we understand things better when we can touch and manipulate them, when we create that physical relationship with the thing. Augmented reality allows that physical interaction. And thirdly, cognition is situated in specific environmental and social context. So for a sales prospect, they have a contextually relevant experience. It's your product in their space. It's these attributes that make augmented reality so powerful for communicating ideas, processes, and products. Now, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir a bit here, but it's worth sitting with it for a bit because this isn't just a marketing gimmick or a nice add-on. This is something that is fundamentally human and we're able to harness that human experience and drive real impact for companies like Automata. And Max is going to show us now how they use it. Great, thank you. So let's have a look at the workshop in the Jigspace app and how we're using it. So here's a link bench system. And with the app, I can start adding further benches and start showing the customization aspect of that product. We can then bring in the robots, which our customers are not familiar with, but also zoom into really specific parts of our system that, that shows how their samples will be, will be handled by our robotic uh, electromagnetic system across the labs. And um, once we've done this education part of the, pro the product, we can zoom out and start customizing, customizing the system to a, a, a customer need. So here we're adding the, the appliances, the lab equipment, and we have a library of pre-approved objects. We can just pull in a new device, such as a plate reader, import it into the jig, and simply place it in where, where it makes sense. And then we can, with customer feedback, we may need to, to move or edit the layout really on, on the fly, really easily. And finally, we can just add labels and any textual uh, information that will help them understand what's happening. And when we're done, we can just click share, and now we have a QR code and a web link we can just share with the customer. So now, let's have a look at this in AR. So I'll just AR demo. So this asset we've just created quickly can now, in a couple clicks, just be open in the app. I'll just turn this around. Here we go. Placed in, in, the, situa in, in the lab of the, the customer. And we can just start taking them through this journey, help them understand the scale of, of the product in the lab and understand how it functions. We can start even zooming in to very specific components and, and describing the, the technology. And finally, we can just give it to the, to the customer and let them explore this beyond just the sales call, the sales meeting. They're able to, to, to experience what the science would look like using our product within, within their, um, their labs. And so there you have it, a two million pound solution and a 20 megabyte AR uh, asset. Um, no coding and no sophisticated, um, sophisticated, um, that's what I'm looking for. Software, <laughs> here we go. Um, cool. So what does this look like on a day-to-day -day at Automata? Just come back to the laptop. Uh, two, three, two. Here we go. So, our trade shows. Um, we use these aspects, a lot of trade shows, where we're able to teach how the tech works and show how the product can be customizable to the customer needs. It enables that quick understanding and learning that Zach was talking about. We even do trade shows with no longer any hardware and any benches. We just send these iPads, saving us thousands in shipment. The sales team will be equipped with the same, um, the same iPads, the jig app, and these pre-approved um, equipment lists we work with, allowing them to create and change jigs on the fly on customer sites, sometimes in less than 15 minutes. Uh, we used to to create this content using a core engineering team. And it would take us up to 15 days, getting them into a meeting, discussing what the project and the goals were, uh, going through design review changes and, and so on, and, uh, and eventually getting to the point where we could create these uh, time-consuming renders. Um, 
this space has allowed us to, to create these fully spec proposal, proposals, which include all the customer feedbacks and the time it takes a competition to just generate a draft proposal. Finally, these great assets we've created um, is what has won us multi-million pound deals with the National Health Service in, in the UK. And these, and these assets are then being reused by the customers to get buy-in within their own organisation. It's no longer just an asset or a document buried in an email thread that they need to dig out and share via email. It's something that the customers want to share. The next application is our product, uh, product, our product team. Um, being a, a sales engineer, I will be at the forefront of the customer needs and requirements. I will be in the labs with customers, showing them how the product could fit within, within this space. Um, sometimes I'll walk into a situation where uh, we've, we've come up with a requirement we've never seen before. Being able to take a jig, edit it in collaboration with the customer, and then send that inside back to our product team and closing the loop is invaluable for them. Um, our product team is now understanding how our customers project themselves using our product, even before they've ever seen the hardware. We used to have quarterly design sprints where we would, we would review all the collected customer feedback over the past few months and, and assess it. Now that is happening every two weeks. We went from a cadence of four major product design cycles a year to 20, essentially making it continuous. Finally, onboarding and training within Automata. Um, we learned the hard way that Venn, the Venn diagram intersection of people who have experience in the life sciences, automation and robotics is almost inexistent. Challenging new staff into this new industry is, uh, training new staff into this, this new industry is challenging. Jig has become a core part of upskilling these new starts. And auto, despite Automata being a hardware company, it has enabled us to do remote training and teaching people how robots work without even seeing one. Within two to three hours with Jig, they're ready to create and put forward unique AO content in front of customers. So, what are the numbers? In our first year of using Jig, we've, create, we've created 250 AO demos. We were lucky uh, if we could get just a handful working with an external company before. We've unlocked this new cap capability in the business to create these rich experiences for customers. AR has become a core selling tool within Automata. Six months to six weeks. This ability to quickly engage and edu educate customers on a unique um, offering has enabled them to share that knowledge as well internally within the organization. And paired with the ability for us to quickly iterate our solutions to, to make it fit um, their labs is what has turned the sales process into a customer-centric sales process and shortening the sales cycle time. What Jig has enabled is to lower the barrier to complex system design, assembly and rendering to anyone in the company. It, they've turned an AR tool into a sales power tool that can be picked up by anyone in a couple of hours, freeing up skilled CAD engineers' time to focus on the more complex and difficult tasks we've hired them to do. Um, we've also been able to just upskill our current workforce, allowing them to service more customers and deals with the same headcount. As a result, we've been able to quadruple our revenue targets for the year. Back to you, Zach. So these, these kind of examples and those numbers is something that we really wanted to show. This isn't just something that is, that is nice as an idea. It's actually having real impact, like true value for them. And the fact that it's embedded as a core tool, augmented reality can be a core tool in your business and it becomes business as usual, as Max has just shown. And uh, Max was telling us that yeah. every deal now. Every deal now has a, um, a jig attached to it. Within our CRM, there's a required field that 
salespeople have to add a jig, making it an asset that they can then share externally, internally. So it's in every aspect of our business at this stage. So, juicy numbers. Who doesn't want a 75% reduction in sales cycle and quadrupling your forecasts? That would be great. The good news is you can start doing that right now. It doesn't have to be a big change. There are steps you can take, and I'm going to take you through a few of these so you can get started. Firstly, encourage your technical people in the organisation to explore the technology, whether they're solutions consultants, pre-sale engineers, application specialists. These are the people in your practice who work with the customers, people like Max, but who also, they're tinkerers, they're comfortable with technology, and they think, how can I solve this problem with tech? Even with no CAD experience, they can get up and running right now and quickly pick up augmented reality. So give them those opportunities and that autonomy to solve problems in the way that they know how. Secondly, you can use your existing CAD models. You can harness the assets you already have. All your manufactured products start their life as a CAD file. You can use that as a starting point and immediately drag and drop it into your tool, into a tool like Jigspace, and start working on it. Once you've used that asset as well, it becomes reusable, so other people can start using it. You actually drop the barrier for other people just by starting. And as we heard in Max's story, there are key moments, whether it's trade shows with product configurations to meet those customer requirements or the other sales processes you go through, there are those key moments that you can accelerate understanding and, turn, and in turn accelerate your sales cycle. With that in mind, think about those common bottlenecks you have in communication with your customers. Look for the opportunities where augmented reality can improve those situations that require a lot of feedback and communication, those loops. So there's just three low friction ways to get started with augmented reality in your sales process. The upfront investment for this is minimal. The, the process for change is incredibly low friction. You can start right now. It doesn't require a whole organization to change. It can be one person that starts that change. So I hope you've been inspired over the last few days with all the amazing technology and all the talks that are happening here. But I, we really wanted to leave you knowing that it's not a distant future. You don't have to wait for someone else to build it you can start doing this right now. Companies like Automata, people like Max, are getting value from it right now. So if you scan the QR code, you can see some more examples and try it for yourself. And you can get that radical acceleration in your own business right now. Thank you. Okay, if anyone has a question, we have time for just one question. Come up to the mic, please. Amazing presentation and uh, use case and results. Very impressive. Um, your platform, you could just put the CAD drawings, CAD files in, and it will create the 3D yeah. quite easily or manipulated uh, by your team, the cl client's team, or? The, the application handles that. So you just bring it in and you start working on it immediately. So it processes all of it and makes it ready to run and work with. Is the output like an FBX or GLB or OBJ or? It's a jig, so it's our own format that has, you can put audio, video, images, links, all of these things, it's kind of like PDF. Geometry, like the 3D is just one component of it, but it's a jig that can be shared and viewed on any device without an app. Nice. So yeah, it's it. Have a, check out the, check out the link, It'll, it makes a lot of sense when you see it yeah, in action. Thank you very much. No worries. If anyone has one more really quick question, we have a couple more minutes. So just to follow that question, that uh, usually the uh, team should be uh, employee, uh, new members to use these tools to create such kind of content, right? Or just to use their tools with their existing team members, uh, which have their uh, skills, you know, maybe it's new things they need to, to uh, invest some cost for a human resource, right? So if, if I understand your question correctly, it's who, who starts using yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, in an org. So 
I mean, you can, you can answer that, Max. So, yeah, the app is very self-serve. Um, although I have an engineering background, I was not the one designing the assets we, we're using in our, in our jigs. Um, we, we had a database of assets, and you can just load them into, an app, into the app on an iPad or a computer and then view it. But more importantly, you can also share it and view it on a web browser, in a mobile phone, whatever it may be, with no training. Uh, when I say two to three hours, that's the amount of time it took me by myself alone to try and get these assets onto the app, into AR. It's, it's that simple. OK. Just to know any learning curves to get started with this tool. Yeah, the learning curve is, is really, really, really quick. OK. OK. Thank you. Hey. OK. So we can thank our speakers one more time. Thank you. Thank you.